So the longer I've been playing the Deadlands patch so far, the more that I've been kind of massaging and updating and changing my builds. And something that I've been really wanting to try this patch since I've just been enjoying experimenting with a variety of different things here on the Mag DK, I really wanted to try running dual wields and dropping Ellie Drain is something that I feel like I haven't been getting as much value out of this patch as I would have liked. And so, and you know, with the dual wheel passes being hybridized now, it's something I wanted to see if I could get some use out of. And I've made some adjustments to the Inferno build, which is why you can see this title, there's Inferno V2. And I adjusted that build a little bit to use dual wield. And I've really been enjoying this newer version of the build quite a lot. I've been having really, really good success with it. Um, something else that I also wanted to adjust to is that I wanted to kind of bulk up my what I'm going to call like my initial damage resistance. I feel like the build that I was running with Pale Order was able to brawl super well because it had a lot of really strong healing over time from Pale Order and it could it could really brawl for a very long time. But I feel like as the patch has been kind of progressing, I've been seeing a lot of really good, powerful one punch build starting to kind of appear more in Cyrodiil and I've been on that build I've been having a little trouble dealing with them and so I kind of wanted to tackle a way to also deal with that and I have also solved that problem I basically have ever since I kind of adjusted this I've not really died to a gank unless I get Zenimax where I can't heal or I can't use an ultimate or I just can't break free like when I've actually been able to play the game I haven't died to a gank yet since which makes me very happy and so the adjustments that i've made to with this have worked extremely well um but i'm not gonna go over this entire build in complete detail like i did last time so if you have not watched my inferno build yet before you watch this i'm gonna put a card at the top of the video go watch that if you're interested in the full breakdown on everything i'm going to primarily today just talk about the changes i made i'm still going to go over everything i'm just not going to explain everything in depth except for the changes that i've made so the gear in terms of the gear i am still running the exact same thing two piece magma incarnate five daedric trickery on the back bar five burning spell weave on the front bar we still have the four magica glyphs triple prismatic one reinforced all in pen um that has not changed one of the biggest things that changed though is that I moved to dual wield from Inferno Staff. So one of the things that I haven't really liked about Ellie Drain playing in open world is that when I'm fighting six, seven people at once, you know, applying Ellie Drain to all of them is wasting a lot of globals where I'm not really dealing any damage. And all it takes is one Templar to purge and like all that hard work is gone. And so I wanted to try and see like, can I drop Ellie Drain and make some adjustments and, you know, get damage and, and stuff from other places and upon kind of looking at tooltips and stats and stuff i determined that dual wield is definitely better to accomplish that you will get way more damage out of dual wields compared to the inferno staff which is why we switched to it plus one of the great things about dual wield is that you I, like i'm running the mace and the sword and you get access to two traits and since they buffed charge this patch to 240 percent on a one-hander you're actually getting a higher chance to apply status effects on dual wields than you are on an inferno staff because that was one of the inf like passes from the inferno staff you, you you know you'd miss not having it is elemental force increases your chance to apply a status effect by 100 percent. but with dual wields if you run a charge offhand it's actually 240 percent now so it's actually way higher <laughs> using the dual wield so your sustain is going to be better and then you're also going to have better damage because you get to take advantage of twin blade and blunt from dual wield on top of getting this second trait because now i also have nern honed so if you don't know what dual wield twin blade and blunt is going to give you 1650 pen for the mace 142 spell damage for the sword you also get access to ruffian for 15 percent damage bonus when attacking stunned enemies you also get dual wield expert which gives you six percent spell damage on off of like your offhand weapon so your spell damage gets really high like my unbuffed spell damage is 37 43 and that is wearing two sets that have proc spell damage like just standing around i got 3750 spell damage so you're able to push your damage numbers really really high with dual wield and you also get two enchants as well so i can run the flame glyph for the sustain i can run the shot glyph for permanent minor vulnerability which gives me a five percent damage increase and then i also can still run that berserker glyph on the back bar now instead of running like poisons kind of like i was so and that's good too because you need to light attack a lot on your back bar to proc trickery anyway so it just 
develops a good habit for you to be able to not only proc the glyph, but also proc your trickery. Um, one of the biggest changes I made, though, was changing from the Ring of the Pale Order to the Mark and Ring of Majesty. The more I've used this set, this patch, the more I have loved it. It is so freaking strong you get 200 spell damage and 2300 armor and i personally have found that the 2300 armor plus running about 31 to 32k maximum hp is all i needed to change my old like from my old build to this one changing that basically ended dying from ganking because you have enough hp where you're not going to get one shot during the ganker's burst window and so you'll be able to cc break and then heal yourself and then the mark and ring gave me that that just extra amount of resist that I needed in order to survive. You know, it's 200 spell damage, 2300 armor. It's nothing to shake a stick at. And so like on my back bar, like when I'm buffed with Volatile, I have 31k spell resist and 26.5k physical resist. And for a Destro Resto build, that's pretty solid. And that also doesn't take into account the fact that I do have access to major protection from um, Danger Trickery. And then I also do run Relentlessness to guarantee major protection uptime when I'm stunned. So... I feel I do feel tanky enough to survive ganks, and it's crazy. Like you, you see the the numbers that people can hit on their one shots. This patch are huge. So I have found that running this level of tankiness has been pretty necessary for me. Um, but because I lost Ellie Drain, right? I'm gonna lose some sustain, and so because of that, I've actually just run an infused cost reduction glyph. And that covered me sustain wise. Like that's literally all I needed to do. And my sustain is fine. Um, also, one of the cool things about that I like is that, you know, with Ellie Drain, if I'm Ellie Draining a Templar and they purge it off, I always have to reapply it or my sustain is going to be shit. But now I don't really have to worry about that because the sustain is now on this ring and not on a skill. So that was the one change I made. Infused cost reduction as well. Um, made a huge difference in the sustain department. But I still here running arcane spell damage. Still have that one trainee piece. Um, the dual wield, we run Nurnhone with a flame glyph, charged with either a shock glyph, or if you're having trouble sustaining, an absorb magic glyph will also work really well here too. I'm still debating which I like more. Um, in certain 1v1 matchups with a shock glyph, I do notice I have a little bit of trouble sustaining in certain matchups. Um, in others, I don't. 1v xing i never have a problem sustaining because charged gains more value the more targets you're fighting because the more people that have flame damage on them higher chance to apply status effects higher chance for combustion versus one person there's only one opportunity to to get that so you know for open world this is definitely better but for the 1v1 against certain opponents i do find the absorb maglyph to be um better here but I'm still kind of tinkering with that. But let me tell you, having minor vulnerability from this is just amazing because it's just so much extra damage. Um, and then I do run the Danger Trickery Resto Staff still with the Berserker Glyph in the back bar. No poisons anymore. Um, and I think that's really all that changed on the gear front. On the skill front of things, uh, we are still... This is a Molten Whip build, so we do Molten Whip, Burning Embers, uh, still Shattering Rocks, still Flames of Oblivion, and still Ferocious Leap. Now, because we no longer have Ellie Drain... I bumped Engulfing Flames to my front bar, which allowed me to have all three of my Ardent Flame skills on my front bar, which made it really easy to apply, uh, get the three stacks of Seething Fury for Molten Whip, which is super amazing. Um, but on my back bar now, I actually decided to run Igneous Weapons um, as my source of major sorcery, because now I don't have to run Crit Pots. I can run Heroism Potions, so I can run Heroism, Magic, and Stamina Potions, which is amazing for my Stam Sustain. Um, now, you might be wondering, Dots, why'd you go Igneous over Degeneration? So, Igneous is actually more magic efficient for time of major sorcery versus Degeneration. And, again, in open world, you're fighting 10, 15 people. Like, I'm not... I don't want to apply a single target dot like that on my back bar to all those people. Like, it's different with Burning Embers. You know, applying Burning Embers to everybody, I'm getting all those heals, you know, I'm getting the status effects with combustion and everything. But, like, just applying degen to everybody didn't feel like it had as much value. But Igneous, it's, I can pre-buff myself. It's a full fucking minute, basically, of major sorcery. Um, I also do get some stamina restoration from uh, Mountain's Blessing. I also generate ultimate when I cast this in combat. Um, it also helps my group members. It looks really fucking cool. So I've actually really liked Igneous for like my back bar uh, sorcery buff. So I have really been enjoying that quite a lot. Um, but I still run Rapid Regen as my primary hot, Coag as my primary burst heal, Volatile as the armor buff, Elusive Mist, and then Light's Champion. That has still not changed. Um, Light's Champion, actually, if anything, 
feels like even stronger now because like major force with this build oh it just feels so good um one of the things too that's also really good about the dual wield over the destro staff that i forgot to mention is that dual wield is going to buff up ferocious leap where the inferno staff won't because ferocious leap is technically an aoe skill and so the inferno staff won't affect it so that's one of the good things about the extra spell damage from um dual wield is that it will affect your leap now in terms of consumables we're still using the atronach we're still a stage three vampire we are still using bewitch sugar skulls um i'm still a breton which allows me to run stage three vampire with minimal problems um potion wise this is one of the big changes that i made i am running heroism potions these are very very expensive if you do not run this potion you will have to run that absorb magic glyph in your offhand because this potion is a lot of sustain for the Magicka Dragon Knight. Because it gives you uh, one ultimate every one and a half seconds. Which again is just sustain essentially. And then you also get Magicka Recovery from Major Intellect. So it's essentially kind of like double dipping on your sustain here. And because we get Major Heroism from Daedric Trickery. That means you have Major and Minor Heroism present in the build. So your alt gen is insanely good. But like I said these potions are like. I think it's one of the most expensive potions in the game. That you can make. It is very pricey. So if you cannot afford this run regular tri stat pots but you're going to have to 100 percent use an absorb magic glyph in my opinion and you're offhand um because the heroism really does contribute a lot towards your sustain the other change that i made is that i moved i'm still debating with the exact health number i want to use um but I'm trying, I'm debating between at least 31 to 33k HP. I'm still kind of messing with it. I'm pretty happy with like, I think the 31 to 32 actually from my tests. Um, I'm basically trying to figure out like, what's the minimum health that I want. And then I'm going to send the rest into Magicka. So, you know, yesterday when I was using the build, I was playing with about 32 and a half K HP. Today I played more with 30. Now I'm going to be experimenting with 31. Um, but right now this has felt pretty healthy to me uh 31 khp with 32.2k max max that's about nine into health and 55 into stamina that's felt really nice for me like i'm telling you i want that's one thing i've definitely slept on a little bit was the really big health pool you know i thought okay you know 29 khp 29 and a half k oh that's more than enough but man the amount of times i've survived a gank with 2000 health left and i've been able to survive and then kill that ganker because of updating like because of update upping my health to 31 32k it has happened so many times so i actually have really enjoyed running the bigger health pool also it makes my leap shield much bigger which is also pretty fucking cool um like i said everything else is pretty much i think stayed the same there um champion point wise i'm still using all the same shit uh, deadly aim for single target attacks and dots master at arms for direct damage that's uh all of my instant hits for embers engulfing flames leap lash etc duelist rebuff still for single target damage attacks and then ironclad for direct damage attacks this covers so much of what we're scared of right now so that is why we use that uh defensively boundless vitality 1400 maximum health sustained by suffering for re 150 recovery when you're under the effects of a negative effect pain's refuge two percent uh, damage mitigation for every two negative effects active on you up to a maximum of 20 percent now the one thing that i have changed is that i was running juggernaut before because technically speaking i do have major protection from Jager trickery and so i didn't want to relentlessness because in a vacuum they could overlap i have decided to just move and use relentlessness instead of juggernaut because relentlessness will guarantee major protection uptime when i'm stunned because it's not guaranteed that I'll always get major protection from Danger Trickery when I'm CC'd, which kind of blows. So, while there were certain situations where I would have the protection from Trickery and then the 5% from Juggernaut that felt really that felt really great, and the situations that I didn't have protection from Trickery up and I got attacked, not, not feeling as good. So, I like Relentlessness because it evens out the curve of mitigation. I, I have superior mitigation more frequently, so we did change to that for that reason. Um... But I don't think I really changed anything else. I think that was the majority of what I changed. Um, I can't just go over the quickly the new stats with you guys based off of what I got. I've got 32k max mag, 31k max HP, 20k stem, 1200 magic recovery, uh, 3750 spell damage, 29% spell crit, with about 5200 spell pen. Now I know that's something that people are going to give me grief for most likely, but really quick. 21.8k spell resist, 17.3k physical resist, back bar is 20.6, 25k spell with about 2100 crit resist. Now I know most likely 
I'm gonna have somebody telling me like, oh, dots. There's no way you kill anybody with 5,200 spell pen. Yes, you do. I personally have had no issues with running this much spell pen. Like, honestly, I, I really don't. Like, I've ran multiple tests where I even like tested this build with this amount of pen versus my old build that had 13k spell pen. And arguably, this build felt like it did more damage. And when I tested out a sharpened uh, sharpened mace instead of a nern honed mace, the damage difference was something like three effective spell damage, like that, that pathetically low. And running that more pen, so I'll get three more damage, but then I sacrifice the extra healing that comes from augmenting my spell damage pool further. So... For me, this has felt like enough pen. If you want to run more, be my guest. Run more. Run a second mace. Run a sharpened mace. If you want to, go ahead. This is just, for me, this has felt like enough. I, I tried running a little bit less pen at one point. Where I was like, I was fucking around with like double dagger, uh, dagger axe. I was messing with a bunch of the dual wield weapons. And not running the one mace, it felt too low. Like, adding in one mace increased my effective damage by quite a lot. Adding in a second source of um, pen and sacrificing then spell damage to add that in, not as impactful. Not as impactful. So, for me, this is kind of what was like my cross, my cross-sectional area, like the point where it met, where I, I would rather sacrifice the, the teensy bit of... Uh, pen and damage that would come along with it for superior healing, especially when one VXing. So, this is what the this is what I'm running. This is the updated version of the um, of the Inferno build. I'm gonna have a video coming out. I'm, I'm, when I'm saying this video on YouTube this week, <laughs> um, that shows uh, some highlights of the build when I was playing with uh, Double Dagger. But I'm most likely going to try to get some clips from uh, using the actual. Uh, mason sword i think i got some from today on stream that i could either attach to the end of this video or upload as a as a second uh second video on its own but yeah that's the updated build guys uh, if you want to give the dual wield version of that a shot give it a look if you haven't watched the original inferno build watch that this build will make a lot more sense um but if you like the changes like them comments leave them below subscribe for more content eso and mmo otherwise and uh yeah appreciate you stopping by thank you very much as always i'm dots gaming and yeah, I think that's that's about all I've really done. That is the the change is kind of summed up. Go on the DK first. This guy over here, he's squishy as shit. Nice. Dragalia lost? Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. What's paired with trickery? Uh, burning spell weave. Have you tested Talons versus Engulfing Flames this build? I don't even have to test it to know that Talons would be significantly worse. Talons is a lot of magicka for a really short dot. Engulfing Flames is a strong AoE Conal. That also increases the rest of my damage by 10%. So it is a no-brainer to me that Engulfing Flames would be better. Tal uh, Talons is also infinitely more expensive. This guy's going for a res. Stop it. Oh, we got it. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Just keep an eye on that guy out there. This guy's going for a res. My leap. Enemy Rem. I'll put fucking burning embers on everybody. You get a numbers. Here, go on this guy right here. Thurend, uh, so whatever. This guy is a healer, also pretty squishy. They got the res because we're depressed. My rapid regen for you, dog. 
Just stay alive, just stay alive. Here, here. My uh, my lights, my lights, my lights. You're good, you're good. Let's go offensive. You have, uh, you have force, you have force. Nice, got the healer down. Ignore this DK. He, he Just ignore him, ignore him. He's pretty tanky. Definitely, definitely better targets to take down first. I fossilize on the night blade. If I can CC break full stand. Their numbers are starting to get pretty high. We're gonna I wanna move into a tower. Just because there's a sniper there and I don't want to take any I don't want to continuously take free damage. Oh, I lost my stacks because this game is a quality product. Where am I getting fucking sniped from? Nice, good shit, good shit, good shit. Drop to this guy in the bottom, my boss. Yeah, I just got Zoss super hard there, bro. Where is the sniper guy? I want to poke out so I can see who it is. Let's just take down these guards. The biggest tip that I can give you for being able to land engulfing flames is take a step back before you use it. Because if if you're like right in someone's face when you go to use it, they're at the um they're at the thinnest part of the cone. But if you take a step back, they'll be at the a, a wider part of the cone, so you're more likely to uh to land it. This guy right here, time machine tester right in the corner. The time machine toaster. My fossilize on this guy. My leap. Nice, good shit, good shit, good shit. This guy now, Therondath. Oh, nice, 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 good pressure, good pressure. That's the rem, that's the rem. My fossilized out of the rem, ready, and... Here we go. Bam, get fucking bursted, bro. Get bursted, boys. Nice, good shit. That was a good fight, that was a good fight. I don't know. I, I think, personally, they should patch the game eight times a year in terms of balance and fixes. Oh, shit, I'm being attacked. I didn't even notice. Eight times a year? Yeah, so basically the four the four patches plus um one, one balance patch mid-patch each time, you know what I'm saying? True. It would be just so that things like... um. Things like Dark Convergence would could get like fixed mid patch, and we wouldn't have to wait for, um, wouldn't have to Three wait months. for a DLC release. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of people up by me. If you want to come my way. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just doing a quick X right now, dude. You want to finish this? Yeah. Finish yeah, it. I'm gonna finish this. Thank you, friend. Wait, why did I get fucking hit with the ability? I'm like Maybe. fucking ten meters away. Maybe it was the, uh, the Hrothgar. Right. Oh, yeah, you wanna, you wanna jump in? There's a bunch of people here. Yep. On the boat hard? Yep, with you. Big lash. Oh! Pfft. Casual 10.5k whip. Memory leak already? I just hopped on. What do you fucking mean? I got you some off heels. Could you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't see my fucking shit. Yeah, I got you, I got you. Thank you. Holy These shit, These fucking man. guys with the reses, bro. Ooh, yeah, my memory leak too. Holy. That was just, that was just my, my ability lag, actually.
I'm just running. Parker. Parker. Got one. Yep. First kill a Mac DK first. Yeah. Yeah, I want to kill this guy's space cadet. He's the only one that does any damage. Yeah. I'm going in. Yep. Nice. Anchor behind you. Block. Nice. nice. My memory leak? My memory leak? I can't fucking see what the fuck's going on. Oh, yeah, we would have killed that guy. Oh my god. Anchor. Yep. I fossilize on him. Ah oh, shit. What I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and lights champ next. Uh. Let me know when you have yeah. a when you have a mech. It's it's coming up. Crash. I kind of need it. Okay, I'm just gonna give it to us for safety now. Yeah. I'm just going. Just, this is a dick load of people. I'm getting this max orc in the back. I think we need oh, I'm to. Going in. Okay, okay, okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. With you. I killed two. Nice, nice, nice. I need a heal. Fuck me. I did give you one too. Yeah. The memory leak is killing me, man. Oh, can I not go through this? Oh, it feels bad. Oh, camp is down too. Fuck me. Did you guys see me press Light Champion 95 times? <laughs> I was just standing there doing nothing and I'm pressing Light Champion. Oh. Oh, I don't think such a good fight, too. Oh, that's so sad.